There were times in the past where I was an absolute hater on the GNOME desktop environment, and that you know dislike has mellowed over time. I'm not a GNOME fan. I would probably refuse to use GNOME if there were other options, but I am not as opposed to it as I once was. Now, all of that is true. Another thing that I know is true is that I use Fedora, and I'm a big Fedora fanboy now, and it is a fantastic distro. I also know that the Fedora distro is the premier place for the GNOME desktop environment. It is like these two teams work very close together, and they're basically, you know, some of them are both on the same team, right? They inter work very often. So it struck me as odd that the Fedora distro does not use GNOME Web as their default web browser. Now, for those of you who don't know, GNOME develops their very own web browser, and it has been around for a very long time. And I used it not as a daily driver, but I I last used it probably about two years ago. It was god awful. It was so bad. It made me wonder why they even continued to develop it because it's just not a good experience. So I thought it was high time that I sat down and used GNOME Web again. Now, if you are wondering what GNOME Web is, it's the same thing as Epiphany. Uh, those two things seem to be interchangeable. I'm not actually sure if there's a difference there, but they seem to go by the same name. So, I have been using GNOME Web in a VM over the last couple days. Now, the reason why I'm using it in a VM is simply because when I installed it on my main hardware, it took over everything. <laughs> okay, so... I did not not want to use it as my full-time browser. I was not going to dedicate myself, no matter how much I wanted to do this video, I was not going to dedicate myself to using it full-time, but I wanted to use it. So I installed it on my main system, and it set itself as the default browser without asking. So every time I opened up a link for, like from Discord or something like that, it opened, and that was annoying. But it also just randomly popped up every, from every once in a while. Like, it was always running. I could not kill it. I don't know what was going on there. I think that was a flat pack issue. It was very weird. Uh, anyways, I installed it on my main system, installed it in a VM in case it decided to go rogue again, and I've been using it there for a while. Now, I do most of my work in VMs when I do this kind of stuff, unless I'm reviewing a distro, which I try to do on hardware. Anyways, I've been using GNOME Web for a while, and I have decided to ask this question. Is GNOME Web good? But also, is GNOME Web usable? So let me actually show you GNOME Web so you can kind of see what this thing is all about. So this right here is GNOME Web. Right here in front of you, we can make it full screen so it's, you, know, you can see it, but we can move this around. And out of the box, the look and feel of it is actually pretty good. It's very, very minimal. It has a bar along the top. If you close one of the tabs here, the tabs actually go away which is very nice, and it just leaves you with a single bar along the top. So if you're into minimalism when it comes to your browser Chrome, this is very nice. It looks very, very nice. Now, in, outside of how it looks and feels, it does have a surprising number of options for you to customize. So if you go into the preferences, you will see that it has the ability to block advertisements, block pop-up windows, which are at least the pop-up window thing is pretty standard, but built-in ad blocking is really nice. And it works fairly well. If you're just on a regular website, like say you're on It's Foss, which I think has advertisements, I'm not actually sure, but if you just navigate around the web to places you know is going to have web uh, advertisements, it does a fairly good job of blocking ads. Now, it does leave blank spaces where ads are supposed to be, which is not the greatest thing in the world. So, but you don't see the ads, which I suppose is what you want. Now, obviously, when a site like MSN has a ton of advertisements on it, it looks not great. But again, at least you don't see the ads. Now, where it doesn't work very well is on YouTube. Now, this is not GNOME Web's problem. Like, this is a almost a universal problem when it comes to built-in ad blockers. Braves doesn't do a very good job of blocking YouTube ads. Uh, Cute Browsers doesn't do a very good job of blocking video ads. And GNOME Web's built-in ad blocker does not do a very good job of blocking video ads. So that's not something that I'm all that surprised about. So if we go back to the preferences, let's continue taking a look here. 
it does allow you to set your default search engine which is good you can change where your stuff is downloaded and it allows you to easily start an incognito mode which it does have incognito mode which is good it allows you to restore your tabs on startup and it has mouse gestures now i have not been able to test these because i'm assuming what it really means there is trackpad gestures uh, i do not have a trackpad so i can't test that out and it has built-in spell checking so you can also change the font style you can use a custom style sheet. I'm not sure actually what that affects, whether it's the Chrome on the outside or if that's for websites itself. I didn't test that out at all. And there are some privacy settings. Now, the one thing that is missing here that is coming later on is extensions. And I want to take a small moment to talk about that because as I'm testing this right now, extensions is a deal breaker because there are certain extensions that I would need in order to actually use this as a daily driver if I were going to. I'll talk about the reason why I wouldn't here in a few minutes. Things like Bitwarden, I'd want that to be an extension. I use, usually use that as an extension instead of an app. Uh, things like uBlock Origin so that I can block the video ads on YouTube and other websites. Something like Dark Reader so that I can actually have dark mode in all the websites. You kind of get the idea. There are extensions that I need and that's not here. Now, What's weird about all this is that it, it is coming. So supposedly in GNOME or in GNOME Web 43, it will have the option to use web extensions from the what I believe to be the Chrome Web Store. So you're going to have a vast selection of extensions. Oh, I misspoke. It's actually the Firefox add-ons web portal that is going to be used. Uh, so not Chrome, but Firefox. Still very good selection of extensions. But again, this is not here. So so like I said, this is coming, but it's only coming in GNOME 43. Now, I don't have GNOME 43 yet. This is still Fedora 36. And from what I can tell, Epiphany 43, which is GNOME Web, is still in alpha. So I'm not sure if this is going to hit for GNOME 43 or not, or if people who already have GNOME 43 are experiencing the awesomeness that is extensions. I'm not sure. All I know is that I don't have it yet on this version of Fedora. So... I haven't been able to test that out. Hopefully that will make GNOME Web just a little bit better. But to be honest with you, even with extensions, GNOME Web is unusable. And the reason why is because it's slower than you know what. It is a very, very slow web browser. Now, if you're just navigating to a regular website, like we did earlier, we navigated to MSN. Let's go to the other big homepage of the internet from yesteryear. So we'll go to yahoo.com. Yes, yahoo.com still exists. Now, that is not a horrible load time if you're just navigating to a website, just a regular website. MSN looked like it was a little bit slower, whatever. It's not so slow as to be unusable. Where it is so slow as to be unusable is when you start to mess around with YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, so let's just go to a a YouTube channel that I know and love, like so. We'll just go here, and yeah, we'll, that is quite a slow load time. Not horrible, but it's when you start to play a video. Now, watch it make a liar of me, because I've been using this for, like I said, a few days. Every time I go to YouTube, I get this like very slow page load time, and then I hit play, and it will start playing right away, and then it will get up to the point where it started, it stopped buffering, and it will then, or where it has buffered ahead, and then it stops. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the frame rate here is really low. Now, some of that is that it's playing in 360p automatically, which is a little odd given the fact that, you know, I, even though I'm in a VM, I should be able to see 1080p60 by default, but it chose 360p by default. And again, as you can see, it's very... I don't know if it comes through on the video or not because of all the YouTube compression and the fact that I'm only recording in 30 frames per second, but it looks jarry, like it's skipping frames, and that's not a fantastic thing. Now, it did load faster now that I'm recording because of course it did, but I've noticed really slow load times on YouTube over the last two days. It's not been a good experience, and some of the default experiences that you use on YouTube. So for example, if you go into the shorts section here and you try to use your scroll wheel to scroll down, it scrolls down like a, like, I don't know if you can see how weird that is. Like usually when you use the scroll wheel on YouTube shorts, it just skips to the next one. 
This one does it sometimes, but sometimes it's like stuck between two of them, which is slow. Like you see how it's kind of janky there. It's a little weird. Now, if you just use the arrow keys to navigate between shorts, it's fine. It works just like you'd expect it to. It's when you use the scroll wheel on your mouse where it gets a little weird. So that was another thing that I experienced. And like I said, the two biggest areas that I have a problem with is the slow load time on YouTube. It's really slow. And it also, relatedly, has a big problem with dropping frames and looking like it's buffering all the time. But the other problem that I have is the built-in ad blocker is not so good when it comes to video ads. And like I said, that's not really a GNOME web specific problem, but it is something that I noticed. Now it does block some ads on YouTube. It just doesn't block the ones that are like pre-roll ads and that's annoying. So there are a few things that I like and that I want to kind of close this out on. So first, I like the minimal aspect of the the Chrome around the window. So the fact that it's just one line, I like one line browsers. I think they're fantastic. It's usually the way that I use my Firefox is just in a one liner setup. And this is really nice. I like that the if you're only using one tab, the tabs go away. So you're very minimal when it comes to the stuff that's around the web content. That's very nice. It has very good bookmark support. So if you want to use this you can have bookmarks you can also use firefox syncs to sync your bookmarks which is really nice so if you are a former firefox user and you would want to switch to gnome web you can at least bring some of your stuff along it's not going to be everything but it'll be some of the stuff which is nice again it does have some keyboard shortcuts and it has all of them laid out really really nice one of the things that i kind of dislike about firefox is that they have good guides to their key bindings but you have to go search that stuff out it's not a great experience unless you go do that so the fact that this stuff here is front, right front center and it's very well laid out is really nice so that is another good thing the last thing that i really really liked about it is simply that it is fairly lightweight it doesn't seem to take up a lot of resources now i haven't pushed it to its max max like trying to put in a ton of tabs or whatever but it seemed to work fairly well in terms of resource usage. So so to answer the question, is GNOME web usable? Eh, kind of. If you're just going to use it for just web browsing, it's not too bad. It's when you try to push it into like watching YouTube videos or anything that has like heavy JavaScript and stuff like that. It's it just slows down. It's a little bit too slow for my tastes. And until those extensions come out those extensions are also missing and that's just kind of takes away from the experience. So that's GNOME Web. If you use GNOME Web or, or have used it in the past and you like it, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.